to Conversations with Crystal. I'm your hostess, Crystal, and thank you for joining me for another evening of fabulous entertainment. Now, the person that I'm bringing you this evening has a really high vibration, high energy act. He loves to get the audience up and dancing and singing along and he always provides great entertainment and a great show. Let's welcome Ron James from Voodoo Punch. Hey Ron, how are you going today? Hi Crystal, how are you? I'm, I'm really well. I'm happy to hear it. I'm very well too. Thank you. Look, oh. Ron, um, I absolutely loved you from the first moment I seen you burst onto stage. And I will say you burst onto stage because you have such an enigmatic presence. Wow, that is really nice to hear. Thank you. And I, may I return that compliment to you, Madame? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, I just thought, wow, who's this fella? Where did he come from? And you just involve the whole of the audience. You involve the band. You know, it's it's mm. really a show that you put on. And oh, thank you. No, I, I work really hard at doing that because I, I'm, I've, I've seen some vocalists just come and sing and not get too involved. And I thought it's nicer to have the audience involved. Then they feel part of the whole you know, gig. Absolutely. And people love being involved because, yes. you know, people in the audience, uh, we're doing things that they can sometimes only wish they were doing. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. And, and look, at our, my, my philosophy is everyone can sing. Everyone can sing. Some people can sing better, some people can't, but everyone can sing and everyone loves to sing. So why not involve people? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think you do an absolutely fantastic job at it, Ron. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> now, Ron, how long have you been performing? I can only imagine that you've been performing since you're in nappies. Um, yeah, probably. I think mum <laughs> said I used to annoy her with my crying and singing and everything. So, yeah. So No, but I think uh, probably, probably from the age of 14. I'm 58 now. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been a while, but... Um, yeah, but because I um, was, I grew up in a third world country, music was really sort of no priority for anyone, including, you know, parents. So it, it was just one of those things you did. Uh, so no, no real preference given to it by parents or anyone. So uh, except one member of my family, which I can tell you later when you ask me about influences and things. Yes. Yeah. So, so where, where, did you, uh, where did you grow up, Ron? If you don't oh, mind me asking. Uh, no, 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 not at all. You ask anything. Um, I grew up in the city of Karachi, which is in Pakistan. Oh, um, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I, I migrated to Australia when I was, I think, 27 in 1991. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, no, it's fantastic here. So it's, a, I think, an amazing place here. So it and, is, uh, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, really, very different to where I grew up. But, um, you know, I love the place here. That's great. And have you always lived in Sydney, Ron? Yes, yes, always lived in Sydney. Just travelled interstate a bit. But, um, yeah, look, I really love Sydney. Um, I've been to other, like Melbourne and all, but I wouldn't even see myself moving there. I, I just love Sydney. I know. You know? It's, uh, we, we live in the the best place, I think. You know, we have this well, beautiful so. harbour and lots of yeah. music venues and lots of jam um, well, it's, it's all that, and I also uh, I went to Sculptures by the Sea today. You know, it's just oh, amazing. You, lovely. Yeah, so it's just I think it's a fantastic place to be. It is. It absolutely is, and we're very, very lucky, and we're yes. very blessed that you came and settled here. Oh, that's really lovely of you to say. You're welcome. Now let's go back to when you were. What did you say about fourteen? Uh, yeah, I think so, but uh, possibly 12. Um, I'll, uh, I basically, um, it, it sounds silly what I'm going to say, but it's true. All, all the, being Catholic, all, all the boys knew that age, the best way of meeting girls was to join the church choir. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. I mean, there, you know, a lot of girls would go and sing, so we used to go and sing. And then I was singing uh, there in a big group, but then the keyboard player who was like the conductor, 
he sort of heard me and he pulled me to the front and he said, no, no, you stand in the front. And then uh, we did a concert. I sang Brown Girl in the Ring by um, Bonnie M. Oh, wow. And, and the choir was backing me. And then I sang, you remember the song One Way Tickets? I do. Yeah. So I sang those two songs and then suddenly uh, everyone said, oh, you can sing. And uh, yeah, mom and dad were quite surprised because they sort of never really, you know, um, I never sort of, not. they were not mean about it. They just didn't, never encouraged it. It was just not done. Yeah, so, right. And then suddenly they go, oh, that's my son. That's my son. So <laughs> you, you know how parents are. Yeah, yeah. look, um, uh, I, when you were just talking about that, getting, you know, being placed in front of the choir, I got chills. I thought, what a moment. What a defining moment in a young man's life. Yes, yes. It was quite special because uh, he saw something or he heard, something in me that you know no one else had done before mm. and then he just and then you know just everyone sort of said this guy can sing then i got invited to do other things and then you know then it just led to you know just being around people who loved music and could play music and then you know just life just unfolds in the best ways possible sometimes isn't that fantastic? Oh, I'm so glad that you were put on that this path yeah, and that you've yeah. continued on this path. Now, we yeah. talk about your mum and dad a little bit. So they weren't musical at all, and I know you grew up in a bit of a difficult situation there. So yeah. were they musical? Was there an uncle or an aunt that used to sing um, or...? Yes, there was an aunt, uh, and she's 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 also um, in in um, she lives in Cessnock at the moment in New South Wales, mm -hmm. and um, she actually saw potential. And then what we used to do on you know certain days, she she uh, she we had a little tape recorder and they didn't have money to buy anything bigger, but she used to play Beatles songs. Oh yes, and, yeah, I could sing with her. And then, you know, suddenly I really started, I loved the Beatles from that early age. And then uh, suddenly she said, oh, look, you can, you can hold a tune. So it's something you need to really pursue. And, well, uh, you know, yeah. I'm glad that you had that encouragement. Yes. Well, without that, uh, it would have been almost impossible, I think. Yeah. So uh, did she push you along? Did she help you believe more in yourself, direct you where to go and how to get this ball rolling further? Uh, I, there was no opportunity to do that, but she kept on um, because it, the, the, just so you understand the background is out there. It's like it's all academic, like you've got to go to school, go to finish your homework and music sort of. But the, I'm talking about that time. Now things are different yep. and they're, they're better now with music. There's better understanding of how important it is. But when I was growing up, it was a very peripheral thing. So even if you said, look, I'd like to join a band, there was, I, no, no, I don't think so, you know? Yeah, right. Uh, that sort of thing. Um, and it wasn't a done out of meanness. It was just, you know, moms and dads, and uh, you know, they, they just thought you, you, this is not something that's going to get you anywhere in life. Right. Well, yes. I beg yeah. to differ because it's got you somewhere. Well, yeah. I'm, look, I'm having, I have a blast. I mean, we're playing almost every weekend now. I met so many new friends. I'm talking to you, you know, Rob, your yes. partner. Yep. Amazing. So it's all, you know, it just opens up so many doors. It absolutely it? does. And like-minded people, you can't go past it, can you? Exactly. I mean, look at the Champagne Jam. That uh, That has changed my uh, life and my perception so much you won't believe because um, with my um, band Voodoo Punch, I we do all fast songs, right? Mm -hmm. But at the jam, I can sing slow songs now, and yes. I can really express myself properly, and that's been a real blessing to me. So yeah. the jam, yeah. yeah. Look, Ron, I I have commented to my husband Rob. I have said to him. Um, that you should do slow songs more often because you can yes. bring a beautiful timber and pitch to your voice. Yes, yes. Well, that's what I've been doing. You see the mistake I made when I first came to the jam about a year and a half ago. Um, I was trying to show off a bit with my vocals and doing picking only songs that I knew I could do well. Yep. Uh, the fast songs. But then I thought to myself after five or six months, I said, that's not really improving me as a performer. So then I started, now I've started doing songs that I've never done before ever. 
and the slow some most of them are slow songs yeah and that really um helped me um grow as a performer so i owe a lot to graham and the champagne jam uh, crew yeah look i definitely can hear that you've improved for sure and it's yeah. not always about jumping around and putting on a show because the some of the most um, engaging performances can be when there's uh, a ballad and yes. you're putting emotion into that ballad yes. and being still can evoke so many feelings from the audience and they sit there enthralled. I've uh, yeah, them. absolutely. And, and that's the, I'll, I'll uh, bounce that compliment back to you because some sometimes you will do a song that just you know the place just goes quiet right yeah when you sing a like a particular song that just suits your voice perfectly and my partner Cheryl goes wow you know Crystal really hit that out of the park and um, yeah it's those moments that are really great aren't they yeah I oh, thank you for that too Ron <laughs> oh no no I'm I'm not making this up because this is your show I'm telling you the truth. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, like you know, I sometimes I do a song and I feel, ah, oh, I didn't do that so well. So, we, But we all have that, don't we? But there's one song that will go so well, you know, for ev- every vocalist at one time or another. Absolutely. And you know what? I think what's important about um, when you are, you can get a little overconfident, I believe. So Absolutely. if you're, yep, I know I can do that song and blah, 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 and you get up and for whatever reason <laughs> you go sharp or flat and you're like, oh, my God. Exactly, exactly. But, and and that, that's the lovely thing about the jam because I don't know, like, you know, especially, and you'd appreciate this as a vocalist, uh, especially if you're playing a song where there's a key change. Yes. Um, sometimes you, I mean, sometimes someone misses that key change or you, because you haven't had a rehearsal at the jam, you that's just right. get up and sing it. And that's, that's the, that's made me, um, I guess, a more vigilant performer. Yes. Good point. Good point. Yeah. It's uh, really good. I think the jams, I think everybody should experience a jam, um, you know, at least once in their life because it does show you the other side uh, where, yes, you know, yes, if, yes. if some people who do karaoke, they haven't been with a live band before. So yes. I think it's, it's you know, exceptionally important to those people as well because they're like, oh, hang on. Yep. You've got to kind yep. of roll with the musicians a little bit. You know, oh, and learn to read how they play. Well, exactly, and that—that's exactly my point. Like, um, one of the songs I had done was um, "I've Got You Under My Skin" by Frank Sinatra. Mm-hmm. So I came ready for that, but when they played it, they played it in the same key, but the tempo was a lot faster. Yep. So I just went with it, but yep. uh, you know, I had to change the phrasing on the spot. So. <laughs> That stuff improves, you know, me as a vocalist, to be honest. Absolutely, it does. To be ready for anything, anywhere, anytime, 100% it does. Yeah. yeah. 100%. I remember the first time that happened to me, it was a, a ballad, a blues ballad, and I mm-hmm. um, expecting it to be slow and the drummer changed the <laughs> tempo and I'm, I was horrified. I'm like, uh, yeah. I don't know where I am. Yes. So yes, yeah, yes. It, it, you learn quick smart, don't you? Yes, yes, You, you exactly. really do learn quick smart. Now, yeah. Ron, uh, can you tell me who or what was your earliest influence? Now, I know it was your aunt who played Beatles. So is Beatles one of your favourite bands at all? Um, they were. And then um, when I was about 14, um, I fell absolutely fell in love with Kiss. Ooh. Because um, yeah, their album Dynasty, my aunt had gone uh, overseas and brought me an, a, a little cassette of Dynasty, which is I Was Made For Loving You and all that. Oh, yeah. And, yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then, like, uh, because, look, just so you know, we used to hardly get my music in Pakistan. It was all bootlegged and uh, you couldn't really go. There were no real shops you can go and just say, I'll have this album, I'll have that. There was nothing like that. So yep. we used to get bootleg stuff and then... Yeah, so once I started liking Kiss, uh, that, you know, I, 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 it was already almost a bittersweet thing because I liked them so much, I was not willing to um, accept that any other group was good. Oh, so, really? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just being, you know, fourteen, fifteen, of and course, uh, yeah. you know, just thinking this is the best band in the world. Which is not true, but um, yeah. Oh, they're so, pretty. They're pretty up there. Uh, pretty they up are. There. They are. But I mean, if you listen to how they play the instruments compared to, say, Van Halen, oh, you know, no. yes, I yes. mean, there's no comparison. No, but, but they're also you know, different. They're different exactly, bands. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? After, yeah. Exactly. I'm just talking about ability levels. I mean, I love Kiss still, you know. But um, I guess once you mature a bit, your mind opens up a bit to other music. Yeah, that's right. So Kiss, fantastic. Yeah. Any other bands that got your attention uh, later I on, still maybe? Love, uh, Twisted Sister, Kiss, um, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, all these sort of bands. Um, yeah, and you know um, those those sort of bass Saxon, those kind of uh, rock, but good good mel- melodic rock. Yes. Yeah. So that and uh, look, I also love. Uh, at the same time, I started liking Simon and Garfunkel and, you know, all those sort of, um, you know, those, um, I guess, what is they, what are they considered, folk sort of music? Yeah, or? they are. They are folk folk music, yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I love Simon and Garfunkel. Absolutely. Uh-huh, they're yeah. just um, masters on the guitar and their melodies and oh, their, their lyrics. Harmonies, my goodness. And their, their harmonies, harmonies. yeah. yeah. Just yeah, fantastic. Yeah. So, yeah, you can't, you know, and I think it shows, it does show maturity as if you can go from Iron Maiden to Simon and Garfunkel and yes, everything yes. in between and yes. and lend yourself to experience the different genres. Yes, and, and it has helped me become a better singer because um, I can sing quite a few, except rap. I, I cannot sing rap. Okay. Um, and obviously, I don't do opera, but most other, uh, you know, types of music, I can sing them, you know, whether it's hard rock, metal, soft, um, like it doesn't really stump me. I, I, but but rap, just, yeah, I just cannot do it. Just not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I take that as a challenge, Ron. We're going to get you rapping, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll do an MC Hammer song, I think, one one day. Yeah, let's do that at the jam. It'll be fun, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do a duet. <laughs> now, Ron, did you ever have any formal singing lessons? No, that's the thing. I've never, ever had one singing lesson in my life, and I do regret it but because um, I feel there's, with the with the right tutor, I could go up one octave. Absolutely. You know, like you, I think you as a vocalist would, you know, you get when you do a song, there's some notes you're sort of worried, will my voice crack? Uh, yes. You know, some high notes. Um, mm. Yeah, I, I still have that fear sometimes. So I, I have a feeling there's another octave in me that the right teacher would coax out. Absolutely. But, and I think it's all about. Um, where you're breathing and, Mm. you know, doing vocal exercises and that kind of thing. There is a little trick, though, is you need to find what your highest note is, Mm. right? Mm. So say, for example, I don't know, whatever song, but it's got that really high note that you're really worried about, but you can get the the tone below it, right? You can get the note below it. So then change the key. (laughs) <laughs> yes, no. so that, that note is your highest yeah. note yeah exactly exactly yeah i know no, that's no. simple but you know and you can't do it for every song either but i no. think it's a it's a cute little trick that i certainly evoke sometimes <laughs> yes 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 oh i change the phrasing sometimes like i think for me honestly i don't know what you feel but uh for me bruno mars is the most accomplished vocalist i've ever heard in my life Oh, wow. That's my opinion. Okay. Uh, like way beyond Stevie Wonder and all the others, Michael Jackson and all. Like Bruno Mars is, you know, for me is the apex of what a uh, vocalist can do. Wow, uh, that's a big, his, big thing. Yeah, his, hmm. his key, his songs are really high. I, I have to drop them a, a key when I sing his songs. Yeah, right. right. Well, most of them. Well, not all of them, but most of them. He's, yeah. he's, just, he's just next level good. Yeah, wow. To be mm. like that, eh? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, Ron, how did you get your start? Well, 
did you sing, uh, how, do, how would I say it, like uh, just in a solo act at all or have you always gone in and joined a band or got a band together? How did all of that, how did your start come about? Um, yeah, so when I started singing, uh, like, you know, with the choir and all, and then people noticed, then a couple of young musicians, uh, very, very, you know, we were all really raw. Uh, we used to just, you know, bang around with the drums and everything. And then my uncle used to work for a conglomerate in Karachi. He said, oh, they're having a big concert. Would you, you'd like to just sing two or three songs? <gasps> so we just, and there were like 3000 people there and we went up. And we sang, I remember the young ones were by Cliff Richard mm -hmm. that, and Born to be Alive. So we did those two songs and uh, I, I swear there were 3,000 people, I think five people clapped. But, you know, but uh, it was just such a buzz. And so just, we just said, let's, let's do this. And then, yeah, just kept going for a couple of years, but nothing serious. Yeah. But, yeah, but when, when I got older, uh, probably 17-ish, um, 18, then I joined a band, a okay. formal band, yeah. And what was the name of that band, do you recall? Uh, that was, the first band was um, Axe Attack. I, I mean, it was just a name, the guys had just pulled off an album cover or something. Yep, yep. Um, yep. Yeah, called Axe Attack. And, but we were doing all songs by, like, Rick James, and, uh, you know, just Born to be Alive and uh, Ghostbusters and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so kind of like uh, mid eighty, late 70s, mid 80s, yes. kind of that yeah. kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah, just party dance music sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And, and so were you with that band for very long? I think about uh, two years. And then I joined another band. They were called Vision. Um, and that that was fun. That that. To, uh, I was with them for quite a while, mm -hmm. and uh, out there, see, but, but because we were we were sort of uh, a Catholic band, right? All yeah. everyone was Catholic at that point, just coincidentally. Then uh, everyone, every Catholic couple that gets married, they need a band playing for their wedding, of course. Right? So the wedding party. So we we got quite famous playing for that for for those events, and um, yeah, it was it was good fun. Um, and we should like say December when people, uh, most people get married out there in Karachi, like we used to play 22 gigs a month. Oh my you know? goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So it's exhausting, but, um, but no, it was good fun and it taught me a lot of pressure, you know, uh, equipment malfunctioning and all that stuff. <laughs> I can relate yeah. to the equipment and yeah. malfunctioning. Oh my God. So yeah. on that, have you got a funny story of something malfunctioning and what you did when that happened? Well, uh, yeah, not a malfunctioning story, but the funny story is because uh, it's sort of um, quite a raw, uh, rough place to live in and, and play in. This Once we had this guy uh, come and say, look, there's a, we want the band to play, but it's out there, you know, like what, what you'd call here the bush, right? Oh, yeah. So like it's a, quite a few, it's also like 100 kilometers away, but he said, I'll provide transport, you'll get food, and the money was really good. Yeah. So we thought, okay, so we were a seven-piece band. We went, he brought the car or the van. We went there and we just kept on driving. There was no end inside, he, you know, all these cane fields and God knows what. Anyway, he set us up to a village and the whole village was playing there. But so they said and they really loved us. And we had said we'd finish at 12 midnight. And I went to announce, you know, like, okay, 12 midnight, this is our last song. And they said, no, you, no, 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 you can't go. You've got to keep playing. <gasps> and I, so we said, what do you mean? Like, okay, we'll do one more song. And then we did one more song. And then, no, 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 you've got to keep playing. And then we said, no, we're not keeping on playing. And suddenly they start, they pulled out knives and guns and <gasps> said, yes, we will. You will keep playing. Oh, my but God. It was just yeah, and we were like, whoa, what's going on here? So we spoke to them and um, we said, look, you know, we've got to get back. It's it's like 12.30 already. He said, I said, and the guy, he was, we didn't realize we were in the middle of this village and the guy who we were playing for was a warlord, right? So he <laughs> <told> that, <laughs> I don't sound, now it sounds so, when I think about it, it sounds so funny, but he said, look, Okay, he said, just play for another half an hour. And the bass guitarist says, oh, pay us 10,000. 
you know, if you want to play half an hour, but 10,000 rupees, which is not much now. I but know. he, the guy goes, he reached into his pocket, pulled out a wallet and threw it at the base guitar. So there's 10,000 in there. Just take it and play for half an hour. Oh, my <laughs> and, God. Uh, oh. And when we finished, they were very gracious. You know, they helped us pack up. They dropped us back. And my keyboard player, as soon as we got out of the, of the van, he just knelt on the ground and he kissed it. It was so funny. We were all laughing about it. And um, look, I'm still in touch with my band. Uh, some of them are in Canada. Some are still in Karachi. Some are in America. And we still laugh about it. Wow, you know? what an experience. Oh, so, so you know, uh, just so you know, Crystal, like out here, um, when I'm singing at a pub and someone gets drunk and they start being difficult, Yep. I find it so easy to deal with them because some of the stuff that has happened, um, you know, overseas, like, you know, guns and knives being pulled on you, just like this one couple of drunk guys is no problem. Oh, wow. You know what wow. I mean? Yeah. That's <laughs> um, that it soon toughen you up on. I can imagine, you know, geez. Absolutely. Um, yeah, what an experience. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, it's a little it's a little bit different than someone at you know at the leagues club or the pub going, Oh, just <laughs> exactly. play me that bush off, oh, just do one more song and then one more song is like three more songs and it's oh, just like absolutely. Yeah, now we've got to go and they're like, Oh boo, stay, do some more and you're just like, nah, nah, nah. But yeah, so, yeah, you know, yeah. that's and, kind and- of the end of it. Exactly, and and you relate to this. Like they'll come, you know, some people will come the last four songs you're doing, mm. and they'll say, "Oh, like they happened at Bayview on Saturday. Uh, that's a fantastic venue to play uh, at. By the way, you should uh, come up when we're playing next time." But okay. um, you know, they someone came up the the second last song, and they said, "Oh, can you play Mr. Brightside?" And I said, "We just did it, you know, like <laughs> twenty minutes ago." And they, yeah, so it's it's you always get that. Yeah. Do you ever repeat the song if they want it? Uh, not really, because we think like, well, we think, look, if you've, uh, you know, uh, been ignoring us for like two full sets, um, we, we're not going to dishonor the people that were on the floor by repeating songs. Yeah, right. Just because, you know what I mean? If someone's uh, been dancing all night, um, you know, I'm more... I'm more I'm more concerned for that person because they've supported us by instead of you know sitting in another part of a, a hotel or like a uh, establishment mm. and then only when they're ready to get up and come so then we won't repeat a song for that reason yeah oh you're very very strong and I can see now where you get your strength from and how <laughs> you handle the crowd I can see exactly now so I'm, yeah, not, yeah. I'm not surprised you know you've got that built into you Yes, so, yes. How long have you been with? How long is Voodoo Punch is your band? Um, yeah, I'm I'm uh, the singer for Voodoo Punch now. Um, so we I've been with them. I think it's coming up on five years, and I think they were in existence um, a year and a half before I joined them. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but so, this uh, is easily so you the best. joined that band, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. They put a. Um, like an ad in, I think it was on band mix or something like that. And then I answered it okay. and I went for an audition and um, yeah, it, uh, it sort of, I think it just gelled. Um, and then uh, I think I met them a week later. We did another set of songs because look, I, I was um, already in a, a really, really good band, right? Called Street Party out here in, in uh, Sydney. Oh yeah. Uh, I have um, heard of them. Yeah. Yeah, we were. It was a really good, but we used to do a lot of uh, funk, sort of, you know, like. Um, yep, yep. Yeah, so um, funk and rock, and uh, but it was just time to move on from them, and um, I answered this ad for Voodoo Punch, and uh, but so my position was great, you know, like when you go for a job interview and you've already got a job. Yep. So you're you're going for that interview, and if you miss out on it, it doesn't crush you. So yep. I was in that kind of position. So. Um, yeah, but I liked um, the guys in Voodoo Punch. They liked me, and we did just. I'm really, really glad I stuck with them because the bands evolved from you know when I was first there. We've had member changes and all that. Mm-hmm. Uh, not that, not that the old. Yes, yes, but not that the old members were not good or anything. It's just 
you know, it's just, it's just um, I guess we've just tweaked the band to the point where personally I'm, I've, I've wanted the band to get to this point. Yeah, that's you right. Know? That's right. Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's in a, we're in a good, I mean, look, we, we played at Bayview uh, last Saturday mm-hmm. and um, the, uh, the owner who's a very clued in um, venue manager, he, he's booked us now for three gigs next year already. Oh, fantastic. Right? So, so it's, it's, it's just working well for us, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That's right. And, you know, and I think, Two, um, being in a band, you want to see improvement and you want yes. to not – you don't want to stay the same. You've got to No, no, no. Grow. You stagnate. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You stagnate and then the audience sees through you, you know. That's they, right. They That's go, right. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, we try very, very hard to uh, put on a good show, involve the crowd and, and, and play as well as we can. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, so, yeah, it seems to be working. Yeah, I, I think it is very much. Now, I know you're an excellent vocalist, but, Ron, <laughs> do you play an instrument? Um, I play a, a rhythm guitar, but I'm not very good. So, you know, I just um, haven't bothered, um, you know, um, uh, muddying up the waters by playing on stage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, yeah, it's not, I mean, yeah, very, very basic. Yeah, so. look, I think um, and the only way to get better is practice, eh? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've seen you rock the guitar a little bit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Got, yeah. I've been yeah, playing yeah. more and more at the jam, but... Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it just kind of depends on the song, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm waiting for the day you finish the song and just swing the guitar off your shoulder and smash it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be, be like a kiss concert. I, I would cry because they're they're too expensive to do that too. Yes, I know. I know. <laughs> oh, dear, that's the funniest thing. So now, Ron, <laughs> I have a little feeling that yes. with such a beautiful voice, you may have recorded a single. Would I be correct? Uh, yes, you are correct. I've written a lot of originals. I've written about. 14 or 15, uh, but the issue I've had, and I've had it from day one, is um, never been in a band where everyone is on the same page and says, yes, let's record originals. Because, I mean, you know, they are called a cover band because they are a cover band. So what I've done is um, I've found the odd person who wants to record it with me. Um, and I've got one particular song called Searching for Love, that uh, my my current uh, drummer in the band, Anton, he's one of the best musicians I've ever played with, mm-hmm. very accomplished. So he's amazing on the drums, just as good on the keyboards, just as good on the guitar. Oh, wow. So, and he's got a studio in his house. So he's been fantastic. He's helped me uh, put a couple of my songs together. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, so... You know, thank goodness for him. But my my goal is to, you know, get Voodoo Punch to play a couple of originals because I'm positive people who like them. Yeah, look, uh, they will for sure. And isn't it interesting? I've had this conversation with a few people is, uh, and I've heard it a lot too on the circuit. Uh, we just mm-hmm. want we want to cover band. We don't want originals, right? And it's just yes. like, but. All those cover bands were ori- all those bands, sorry, were original in the beginning. Well, exactly, exactly. And look, my logic is, I, I, I don't, I don't want to do more than one or two uh, originals in yep. a full night. So, my logic is, we do uh, probably eight, eight or nine covers, yep. and then throw in one original. So, you know, in a night, you, you do a couple of them. Yeah, look, I think that's the way to yeah. go as well. You know. Yes. Yes. Definitely, because, definitely, yeah. Yeah, because because the fact of the matter is, I mean, look, I, and I don't know if it's happened to you, but no matter how good a song is, uh, if the audience doesn't really know it, they don't, you know, they don't get buzzed with it, right? No, so, that's you right. Know, like, um, you know, how many times have you heard April Sun in Cuba, you know? But no. when, as soon as the, um, our guitarist starts strumming that, because everyone knows the song, they just jump up. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that huh? nut bush. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another one. You know, the one song that's going really well for us is Mr. Brightside. As soon as we started, there's just this mass 
sort of exodus to the dance floor. <laughs> it's it's yeah. hilarious watching that happen, isn't it? Oh, it's such, it's, such a nice feeling. It and, is. And of course, there's a mass uh, exodus off the dance floor. You know? so. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really interesting, isn't it? Really interesting. Yeah. And, I yeah. mean, as much as people want to dance too, they um, – they can only stay dancing for maybe three songs and then they get yeah. tired. Well, exactly. If, uh, you know, because we, our songs are like high energy songs and That's they're, right. and we, you know, and they're, so we actually, you're hundred uh, percent correct. We did notice that at the last gig we played. Uh, it's, it's, it's a tricky thing is that if you make a set list, uh, your set too long, you tire people out. Yes. So you've got to, it's a very tricky thing. Absolutely, um, yep. Yeah, yeah, because I noticed, um, I think the 12th song uh, was a really good song and everyone, but I could see people had, they ran out of energy. So no, it's, it's yeah, you've got to keep your set list sensible. Absolutely. And, you know, starting off, uh, well, I, I think too, because we've got to do set lists all the time, um, starting off with a, not a slower song, but maybe a ballad you know, say Chris Isaac or something <laughs> like that, that yep. kind of people are still eating or they're just starting to drink and yes, it kind yes. of, you know, gets them into the groove and then by the middle of the first set they're yes. ready to start dancing. By the time you then come to the end of the first set, they're ready to have a sit down and more grog and talk yes. to their friends, yeah. more grog, more yeah. alcohol, and <laughs> talk to their <laughs> friends. And then yeah. by that time that you've had a break, they're then ready to get up and dance. Yeah. But yeah. also they, yeah. they do still, after a couple of songs, want to sit down. Absolutely. And, and there's a lot of psychology involved in making set lists, I find. Absolutely. You know? And, you know, yeah. I've found quite often, you know, we'll be doing, um, you know, maybe a, a ballad or a slower song and then you start another song and it's like everyone's up on the dance floor and it's like, yeah, but the next song's not so dancey. Hang on, yes. guys, we're going to borrow this song from the third set. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And yes. we play that and maybe another one as well and then they go, oh, you can see that they're like, yeah, had enough now. And then yes, you can go back yes. to your original set list then. Yes, but, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. so long as every all of the members on stage are um, on the same page, so to speak, um, you yes, know, and, and yes. I always make sure that everybody has a set list so that they know where they are and they go, oh, yeah, okay. But absolutely, the members get to know the set list. The artist, well, yeah, no, it's know. good. It's good you're talking about you know chopping and changing because I I always liken uh, and I've told uh, the band I'm in I always liken a band to a shark. Like a shark has to keep moving or it, it dies. It just sinks to the bottom. If it stops moving, it it, it dies. That's how it's engineered. Yes. Uh, and I always say a band it has to keep evolving and improving. Otherwise, you know, you just you know, you're just uh, stable and then you get boring to your crowd and they stop coming. So, yeah, it's, it's constant uh, improvement. And what's your, what's your view on bringing new songs in? Do you bring one in every now and again? Do you bring a couple new ones in every couple um, of gigs or do you stay more or less with the same? And what about when mm -hmm. you have requests? Well, if um, say uh, speaking of requests, if we're getting if we've been requested that song, like a song we don't do, but uh, four or five gigs, someone or the other has requested the same song, mm -hmm. we know we need to do that song. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. So we we sort of put that into play. Um, it it is uh, so. So you're you're in a duo with Rob, but do you also sing in a band? Yeah, yeah. We also you, have you, a. So, uh, and how many are you in the band? Five. Five, yeah. So, so you may have the same issue. It's always difficult agreeing on songs for no, us. No, nah, because I just oh. go, "This is what we're doing." Because I'm ah, a singer. Well, that's you're lucky there. So we we've got uh, the democratic process. So everyone comes in with uh, well ten songs, and then we've got to you know sift through and then come up with you know okay, these are the five we're going to be learning. Yeah, so right. Yeah. That's, no, that's not really. Um, like. I don't really recall having any issues at all because basically Rob and I as a unit to begin with. 
Mm, yes, you know, and yes, then then yes. we he's got other players, of course, yes. and you know we even sit and talk about that. But it's they come in already knowing we're a unit, and we already have songs. Yes, yes. So that's the big advantage. See, we don't have that. We're sort of, um, you know, okay. What what are the next songs for the next six months? Yeah. So and, and everyone like I mean we've just gone through this process. So like I wanted to do, you know, let's groove and. Uh, a couple more, and someone wanted to do Everlong by, you know, Foo Fighters. Mm-hmm. So we just keep bouncing back and forth until we, you know, like the five best songs rise to the top. Yeah, look, I think you're right there too because some songs that, you know, one of us might want to do, if it mm. doesn't work in the in two rehearsals, it's like, nah, it's out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? So It's uh, got to it's yeah, yeah. work. Exactly. And I'd say like a song by Charlie Puth, we did uh, Attention. Like uh-huh. we, we actually did it. We did it well, but and it killed for the first gig we did it. Uh, we did. And then the next three gigs, it was flat. So we dropped it. Yeah. So you have to not be precious about that. Absolutely. And I'm not. I'm just like, and I know myself, mm. oh, hang on, none of us are really getting the tempo of this or it's just not working Mm-mm. or we mm. played at a gig and it flops or, yeah, you know, yeah. or it does really well and you're like, oh, well, I didn't think that was my best, but they loved it, you know. So yes, exactly. it's, it's What we do is we kind of keep it so, yeah, we know it, but mm. um, it's not, it then floats to the bottom type of thing. Yeah, so yeah. it's always yeah, exactly. there and we could pull it out if we had it, yeah. if we had yeah. a request for it, but you exactly. never know. It's it's a very it's a very big juggling act, wouldn't you agree, to find oh, I, the right absolutely. songs. Because uh, and, uh, what what you yeah, like, sorry. what you like and what might work well in the band, yes. some punters and places just may not like it at all well that's 100 percent true because like you know i'd love to do a song by say iron maiden like power slave i'd love to do it yeah. but i don't you know you you can't dance to it like so and our, our audience is a dance audience yes so and then you you pretty pretty soon you wouldn't be getting more gigs no, that's so, right that's right so yeah it's it's a bit you you just got to go with the flow sometimes you know a lot of the time ron uh Rob and I'll go, or I'll go to Rob. Oh, I want to do this song in the band or the duo, whatever. And he'll he'll go, mm. he'll do the same. He'll go, oh, I want to do this song. So we tried out at the jam, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's fantastic. You know, one one song I think you guys would do a really great job and go down well is uh, uh, what's that song? Uh, For goodness sake, um, hippie hippie shake. Oh yes, yeah. If, if you haven't done that, just try it once for your audience. I'm telling you, it will go off. Actually, so, I'm going to write that down because I think that was one discussed. Yeah, because it's just got that, um, yeah. I mean, I don't do it with the uh, Voodoo Punch because we, we don't do that era of music. But uh, that I used to do it with another band and it just would go berserk. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, try, it, try. Let, keep me posted. Let me know how it goes. And I if it works, will. you can buy me a drink. Okay. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I, I shall do that. I shall do that. Uh, now, so we were talking earlier about searching for love and we kind of got a little sidetracked there. Yes, my apologies. <laughs> That's okay. So uh, we talked about how the song come about. You've got your drummer and he's got a home studio. Yes, but yes. What was the inspiration for writing that song? Well, um, the lyrics, and I, I'll, I'll email you the lyrics. Um, I, I um, you, you know I'm with Cheryl. and. Yes. Uh, She's she's just been the most amazing uh, person I've ever met. So it's it's I mean no disrespect to my you know ex partner or anything, but uh, just Cheryl was, I guess you know when you when you're looking for something and uh, when you do find it, you just realize what it is. Yep. Um, so that's why I wrote the song. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So I think yeah. what we're going to do now is have a listen to. Searching for love. Go. 
Come take my hand I'll show you the man I once used to be You may understand There's more to the one that I call me I've been searching for love But what it feels to me like a million years Searching for love But I think I'm gonna let love finally find me Come walk with me I'll take you to a place I once used to go Come dance with me Let's leave our footprints in freshly driven snow I've been searching for love For what it feels to me like a lifetime Searching for love But I think I'm gonna let love finally find me Cause I could live a lifetime in your arms If you smile and say that I do To understand the man you wanted to be I could live a lifetime in your heart If you smiled and said I'd go I know deep down inside what you saw You said to me Come laugh with me Let's walk into a room, open a new door Come cry with me I'll wipe your tears away before they strike the floor I've been searching for love For what it feels to me like a lifetime Searching for love But I think I'm gonna let love finally find me I've been searching for love, but I think I'm gonna let love finally find me. Well, Ron, I absolutely loved your song and I look forward to hearing more of your originals. Yes. I I would really love to do that. I think you did a fantastic job on that. Good on you. Thank you. And and may I just say before you go, um, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I'm so impressed with your line of questioning and your manner. It's so relaxing. Oh, you know, thank you very much. Just the way you went about all this thing. I think it's, it feels like you've been doing this for like 40 years. <laughs> well, I've been doing the, the readings for probably over 40 years. So uh, No, but it's it's really uh, your manner was fantastic and you really put me at ease and then it's much easier to answer questions that way. Yeah, exactly. If you're not uptight, it's much easier, you know. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you very much, Ron. That was very kind of you. No, thank you. <laughs> thank, you for, um, thank you for inviting me. Uh, you're very, very welcome. And look, I look forward to uh, catching up with you, up with you at a venue sometime. Yes. And uh, it's, yes. I find it very hard at the moment, and I'm not complaining. I'm very, very grateful that we're gigging mm-hmm. every weekend. So yes, yes, but it, it can be exhausting, and it also yeah does tire you out. I, mean, I find that. Yeah. So yeah. Um, we don't really get a lot of chance to come and visit other bands yes, and stuff, yes, yes. you know, I'm sure things go up and down and things change. So I'll, when yeah. we have the chance, I would absolutely love to come out and see Voodoo Punch. I've seen you guys, uh, you played at uh, Andrew Robson's birthday party and I was just very, I said to Rob, wow. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah. Wow. Look, that was a good night, but uh, we played that with one member missing because a female vocalist uh, got rather ill on that uh, at the last minute. So... I had to chop and chain that set list. So if you heard us at Andy's party, then you, you uh, next time you, when we're, uh, you know, um, got the full band, mm-hmm. and if you can make it, please do come. Oh, absolutely. And uh, we expect front row seats. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> 
<laughs> priority as as seating. Us, as long as they help us back up, I'm, I'm happy to be. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing altogether, isn't it? Setting oh. up and packing down. Oh, my goodness. I know. I think John Bon Jovi doesn't even look at the stage when he walks off. Oh. You know? <laughs> <laughs> would, it, would it be to that every, but we could be like that, eh? Oh, oh dear. Have, have dear. our own jet and have our own limos, huh? Oh, gee, that's the dream, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Get somebody to uh, lug all our, all our equipment for us. Yes, yes, that would be fantastic. Well, Ron, I want to thank you for being on here. And, uh, look, I've thoroughly enjoyed our conversation and... You know, I look forward to catching up with you soon, as I said, and I'll yep. get you to send me your social links so that I can also put them in the description of the show. Absolutely. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're very, very welcome. It's been my absolute pleasure. Well, yep. everybody, this has been Ron James, our guest this evening from Voodoo Punch with Crystal, your hostess. Uh, on Conversations with Crystal. And good night. Good night, Ron. Good night. Good night, everyone. Bye. Goodbye.